If you are looking to be the most despised and arrogant airsofter in the world, then continue watching. If you have no time for anyone on food stamps, if you like going to car shows and talking loud enough so everyone can hear it so you can subtly start fights, then just keep watching. You're gonna love this. I know how scrawny speed softers who date Mill Simmer's daughters act. And I know how the easily enraged server admins known as Mill Simmers react whenever they get beat at pretty much anything regarding airsoft. Get him out of the way! Reach him! Go! 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 This is a game filled with all sorts of lovable psychopaths and genuine airsofters who just want to have fun, who may or may not want to star in a future viral fight video. Does anyone remember this Stone Cold Steve Austin looking dude? And after all the comments, requests, and weird messages from people from high school that think I became a millionaire after high school, which I'm just gonna allow them to believe because it really pisses them off. This is the five types of rich air softers. I'm gonna get by somebody I used to go to school with for sure one day. Being wealthy comes with a bunch of perks. You can retroactively turn off pretty privilege and go from harassing women in public that you never would have had a chance with to being the only correct choice for her. Or at least that's what those gold digger videos taught me. You can also ignore all criticisms from people who tell you that you have a shit attitude or who are telling you that you're breaking the rules at any event. You don't need to let the poor people govern your actions. It's like owning a truck in the United States. The bigger your truck is, the more reckless you're allowed to drive with it. I mean, what's the worst that's gonna happen to you? By the way, I heard that in the UK, people will deflate your tires if you drive an American SUV or truck. Now try some of that somewhere like in Bama. I break my foot off in your ass until your pelvis shot out of your fucking mouth. If one of you liberal Europeans did that to my Ford Super Duty. There is an entire family in the parking lot doing aerobics. Oh great, Scott's gonna be a dickhead to another group of people. That's exactly what the airsoft community needs. Look, I grew up poor, and then I got poorer and poorer until my super Mexican of a mom somehow pulled me out of it. I got a hostile Mexican woman. Please inform Greg Abbott. <laughs> so if I want to dump on all of you guys, I don't care. I'm going to do it regardless. Thank you. Okay, so first off, we really need to go... Sorry, can I help you? Hey, sorry to bother you, but I need you to go, man. I'm... I'm sorry, I'm just kind of filming something here for a YouTube video I'm just putting on. I'm almost yeah, done. Yeah, I I'll... get that, and I'm so sorry, but I need you to go. I've seen other people filming. I mean, we have skateboarders over here. Yeah, I get that, but unfortunately, I can't have you here, man. Like, I'm not trying to be a dickhead or something like that, but, like, I've seen other people film here. Like, I've seen, like, trainers come here and film for, like, their TikToks and stuff. So, what's the... I get that, but the property manager just doesn't want you here. Specifically me or something? Yes. I guess I'll just f myself. All yeah, right. You go do that, just not here. Whatever. Now, because I fully deserve more followers than whatever the hell Instagram tells me my follower count is, you should be following me on Instagram. Instagram is straight up telling airsoft content creators that they're not showing our stuff to anyone, so any kind of support on Instagram would be appreciated. Again, I deserve it anyway, so go make this thing pop off. Look, it's either you follow me on Instagram or I'm posting your sister's phone number on 4chan. If we break 50,000 followers, then I'll personally help fund the first annual Homeless Speedsoft Tournament with a crackhead 1v1 halftime show. First place winner takes home a case of Demi Lovato signature series, Bebe's. Video starts at 4.30. Shut the f*** up. Alright, number five. The guy who HPA converts everything right out of the box. A heavily sedated chimpanzee would be more useful at teaching me how to play chess than a new VFC gearbox to this player. How does a Welshin gearbox with a programmable trigger unit shooting 18, 25 rounds a second at 380 feet per second with a stellar air seal sound to you? These wasteful players with their perceived higher intellect cannot be bothered by the intricate art of AEG teching just like how they couldn't be bothered to keep their unwanted opinions to themselves over how manufacturers should produce their products whenever any new airsoft gun is shown off on social media. Whenever I see this kind of behavior, it just screams, well, if I was in charge, I'd make the best airsoft gun ever. Someone please rub my cock and comment on how intelligent I am. Only two subtypes of this player exist. 
the high rollers who would gladly desecrate even the rarest and most sought after guns by jamming an HPA engine into it. And then there's the even more careless type who would HPA convert a UK arms gun that was found at a gas station in the middle of the Texas countryside where illegal gambling machines are in plain view. Not because these players can't afford to trash the gearbox of a $450 VFC, but because they care so little about anything else. I had more value in the purchases that I was making at age 9 than this player. And I'll have you know that I locked myself in my parents' rebadged Eclipse at age 9. I think that would have been probably one of the dumbest ways to die, but quite fitting for me. Number four, the NVG tryhard slash crusty bitch ass no life. You know those crybaby wannabe political activists? The ones that try to convince you that the world would be such a better place if they just emptied Elon Musk's bank account? Yeah, these are the kind of people that actually deserve that fate. So this is how you enjoy $10,000, huh? By volunteering to be the most hated person at the field. You woke up today in hopes that you would be the greatest piece of shit at your local field. And I don't mean the kind of person that uses nods at a big Milsom event. This kind of player would make sense there. I'm talking about the player who uses twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollar $40,000 nods at a local night skirmish and uses them against players like these. This player can be normally found complaining about how much they hate CQB and complimenting their own HPA builds or bull actions that they only feed with absurd weights of BBs. If they could get their hands on one gram BBs and make them feed, then they would. They're practically throwing bowling balls at you and at your friends, and they're going to do whatever they can to get a life-altering headshot on you. Did you ever get hit in the back of the head by a basketball in school? You might even catch this kind of person bragging about their YouTube channel that's just filled with low effort videos of them skirting the rules to get the best reactions from other players. Why be known as the YouTuber with great edits or as the knowledgeable one when you can just be a dickhead and get paid for it? F the Airsoft community. Your videos aren't for them anyway. Note that I haven't said much about their overkill night vision capabilities. It's mostly because there are so many other red flags that these types of players give off before they turn the already trivial weekend night skirmish game into a bloodbath. When players with Condor loadouts and GNG combat machines or god forbid birthday party rentals walk onto the field, this player sees himself as the Terminator. Expect a lot of reasons to come from this player why you didn't hit him legitimately. I'm just here to test out my new equipment. That's the biggest lie that I hear these players use as an excuse. When the staff decides to open the field for night games, expect this embodiment of sloth to spawn in. It's just a nighttime skirmish. This isn't Milsim fucking West. This is Billy's airsoft bunker. Partner the weekend skirmish MVG tryhard with a pyro spammer, and you've got a recipe for something as destructive as a California street takeover. And if you have to go against a whole squad of these types of players, then just call the ref out on his bull. He's either blind or setting you up for failure. That is when I pack my stuff up and leave. There's nothing I can do to not hand a weekend skirmish MVG guy a bot lobby, as long as I'm not willing to sell my car to get onto his level. What the Be a hero tonight. Shoot any MVG player that you ever see right in the lenses. Number three, it shouldn't even be necessary to say this, but I'm mainly just having a laugh with this video. If you haven't figured out that this is satire or you're trying to ignore that this is satire and take it up the ass, then I don't know what to tell you. But I have a couple of well-off friends that play airsoft from time to time. They're both owners of car dealerships. Yeah, go figure. So you know their kids are well-adjusted. But one thing I've always appreciated about them is their lack to drive anything worth less than a Lamborghini Yaris. And you know what? I'm not mad about it. So number three goes to the rich players who show up with overly expensive vehicles. Maybe I spoke a little too soon. If you're showing up at a field surrounded by a swamp in Louisiana in something like this, then you get what you get. Oh, you, you wreck! Oh! These players will find any excuse they can to bring an RV or a trailer loaded with ATVs, golf carts, or another freaking car to even the smallest of events. 
if they're not bringing out an RV to an event that's only like 10 miles away from their house, then they're going to be bringing out a lifted truck. And I'm talking about a show truck, nothing that's actually capable of work. That's embarrassing, bro. That is the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Beware the flexing or await the lap of luxury. It all comes down to who you are to this kind of player. Everyone around this player is at high risk of unwanted political conversations. It might be best to just shut up and agree with whatever they say, but please note, you'll always be wrong about everything to this player. He knows everything, and he'll tell you why he's right for long periods of time. Number two, the walking armory. Now, this guy actually needs an award. This guy is using wealth for the real betterment of humanity. Billionaires would never get the hate they do if they followed this airsoft player's character arc. I've seen this kind of player bring out dozens of extra guns with attachments on each one. Everything in tip-top shape. No screeching motors, no leaky magazines, everything from the cheap but reliable to the expensive and eye-catching. If you need to borrow anything, Captain Activision bank account over here has it. He's got replicas for you, your boys, your girlfriend, and her actual boyfriend who lets you watch sometimes. Literally, I know someone who owns a school bus and brings dozens of replicas whenever he just feels like it. This player comes more prepared than newly enlisted members of the US Armed Forces are with their sign-up bonuses. And you know their ex ain't getting that child support. I would actually like to be this kind of person, having air compressors, tools, and everything else inside their minivans, buses, RVs, all sorts of things like hundreds of magazines, enough BBs to pollute the entire earth, and cause catastrophic mass extinctions. So that's my vote for the coolest type of air softer. You know, the one that I want to be. All right, number one. And no matter how tightly you tuck your shirt in over your enlarged belly button, there's no saving you from this type of player. This is an absolute lost cause. You might actually really like this player, but just like how most people get really pissed off at the enemy HPA machine gunner who's either rocking a PKM or an M240 Bravo, this type of rich airsofter takes whatever rule set up in front of them and follows it but still makes it irrelevant with a real-life pay-to-win tactic. Number one goes to the no-skill player who throws dozens of pyrotechnics at even the smallest problem until it's either solved with tinnitus or severely burned buildings. Playing with this absolute lack of class is only topped by your level of distasteful business practices and out-of-court sexual harassment case settlements that most definitely helped you achieve the success that you feel the need to show off by tossing hundreds of dollars in airsoft grenades. Whenever tagging grenades become hard to get in the United States, you laugh. If you find yourself in any CQB situation at any Milsom event, then it calls for some tagging grenades. Shattering eardrums and yelling back and forth is your forte. Some of the players that you're throwing taggins at might be a part of your own team as they failed to clear out the one or two other guys in the next room, but you couldn't care less. You either shrug your shoulders or just ignore them completely. I mean, what are they going to do to you? After all, you could just tell those guys that you know the staff. Hell, throw another explosive at them and then leave the area and fart on your way out. You have such a lack of regard for your fellow man that you double down on throwing more pyro into the same room that you just realistically spent $80 to $200 on to clear. But with the grace of a 40-year-old leaning out of a 90s Corvette so he can grab the order that he just made at McDonald's. Oh, and if somebody in the room says something along the lines of, We're all dead in here, asshole. Oh, man, those are fighting words for some of these people. So guess what this kind of player will do? F*** <laughs> is basically your motto anyway. In fact, you probably just woke up this day with the same go f*** yourself energy the Europeans hate so much about Americans. But we actually landed on the moon, so who the f*** cares what they think? And since Dale Earnhardt died, not a man alive is going to make you choose any other route than the one that pisses off the most people around you. You probably walk around the Milsom AO with a cigarette that the admin specifically said that you couldn't smoke. And I express that they walk because the Lord himself knows that he couldn't get his big ass to jog, let alone run. Breaking a sweat at any indoor fight is out of the question, if not out of the realm of imagination entirely. And no, this kind of player doesn't think that throwing more pyro into a single room 
than you'd ever find in World at War's veteran difficulty to be of bad sportsmanship. I don't expect this kind of player to do anything worth even a golf clap to impress me. You're going to scorch the earth if the rules say that you can or not. And I'll just try to walk around the very pissed off enemy team members with hearing damage that think I endorse your unmatched laziness. Clearing rooms and hallways with quick reflexes is for those stupid Adderall speed softers with high school bully issues anyway. You're a fucking man! You have a political podcast to listen to in your spotless dually with your windows down and the volume up in hopes that someone will look at you with a disapproving look on their face. You don't have time for anyone or anything. So until you can get away with riding a rascal at an American Milsom event, then this is the best route of airsoft LARPing for you. And as we wind down this absolutely inspirational award-winning countdown, I would like to ask you all, what type of rich airsofter do you aspire to be? Or dread to be? There's a lot of them out there, and by the sound of some tryhards in the real firearms community, we're buying up all the good gear just to play tag with multi-thousand dollar BB guns. You're damn right. Imagine being as jacked as like Big Scott of Kentucky Ballistics and yet some 140 pound airsofters with way too much money in their pockets are actually buying up all the gear that you want and using it more than you. Anyway, be sure to follow me on Instagram before they completely ban me there. They've been trying for a while and be sure to like this video. Shut up. But be sure to like this video. One like equals one entry into the Ferrari F40 giveaway that we're doing, thanks to the Peterson Automotive Museum. Now we're not doing any kind of giveaway. Fuck you people. But I guess until our next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. God, leave me alone. I'm trying to do my, my, my airsoft award stuff. Yeah. Leave Yo, Y'all want a sneak peek? Why okay. didn't you include us? That's not me. You don't have enough people nominating you. How about that? Gang gang shit. <laughs> There's gonna be some really pissed off random field out of Nebraska that's gonna be like, bro, I'm pretty disappointed in you as a community leader not including our f***ing 10 member field. I get that all the time <laughs> for my event, my event that I put. Hey, you how about you? <laughs> Trying to shame me into including you. Right off the bat, you have the audacity to be a dickhead to me immediately, and I'm yeah, supposed to be out of here, y'all. I hate, I hate y'all. I hate y'all entirely. You mother, you are pissing me off.